this is Susie Costell. Today is Thursday, April 23rd, and it's the last day of James and the Giant Peach. We read the whole book. So today, I'm going to read you chapter 39, and then the book will be done. So, um, not tomorrow, because tomorrow we have our special mystery reader, but next Monday I will pick a new book, a new chapter book to read you. So, it says, and thus the journey ended. But the travelers lived on. Every one of them became rich and successful in the new country. The centipede was made vice president in charge of sales of a high class firm of boot and shoe manufacturers. The earthworm with his lovely pink skin was employed by a company that made women's face creams to speak commercials on television. The silkworm and Miss Spider, after they had both been taught to make nylon threads instead of silk, set up a factory together and make ropes for tightrope walkers. The glowworm became the light inside the torch on the Statue of Liberty and thus saved a grateful city from having to pay a huge electricity bill every year. The old green grasshopper became a member of the New York Symphony Orchestra while his playing was greatly admired. The ladybug, who had been haunted all her life by the fear that her house was on fire and her children all gone, married... <laughs> married the head of the fire department and lived happily ever after. And for the enormous peach stone, it was set up permanently in a place of honor in Central Park and became a famous monument. But it was not only a famous monument, it was also a famous home. And inside the famous home, there lived a famous person, James Henry Trotter himself. He lived inside the peach pit, inside Central Park. And all you had to do any day of the week was to go and knock upon the door and the door would always be open to you. And you would always be asked to come inside and see the famous room where James had first met his friends. And sometimes if you were very lucky, you would find the old green grasshopper in there as well, resting peacefully in a chair before the fire. Or perhaps it would be the ladybug who had dropped in for a cup of tea and a gossip or the centipede to show off a new batch of particularly elegantly boots that he had just acquired. Every day of the week, hundreds and hundreds of children from far and near came pouring into the city to see the marvelous peach stone in the park. And James Henry Trotter, who once, if you remember, had been the saddest and loneliest little boy that you could find, now had all the friends and playmates in the world. And because so many of them were always begging him to tell and tell again the story of his adventures on the peach, he thought it would be nice if one day he sat down and wrote a book. And so he did. And that is what you have just finished reading. The end. What a lovely book. I hope you enjoyed James and the Giant Peach by Roald Dahl, illustrated by Lane Smith. Now if you look up here, it says now a major motion picture. So there is a movie out. And if you can find it to watch it, I'm not quite sure what it is where it is to stream. When I find out, I'll let you know. But if you can watch it, it's a pretty good movie and you can watch it with your family and then you can compare and contrast the book with the movie. Okay, have a great day. Bye, miss you.